Item Number SCP-1384 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures The original entrance to the tunnel containing SCP-1384 is sealed with concrete to prevent civilian access. A new shaft has been dug under the pretense of a public works project. The tunnel must be accessed and SCP-1384 interacted with at least once a week by personnel familiar with Document 1384-1. All interaction must be recorded and studied afterward by Foundation analysis teams. Personnel are forbidden to ask for or offer anything to SCP-1384 outside of clear testing procedures. This includes seemingly innocuous or abstract things such as the time or one's name. Please see Incident 1384-2. Description: SCP-1384 is a sapient entity with a variable appearance. It typically appears as a human or human-shaped construct, ranging from 1.5 to 2 meters in height. It has also appeared at other times to be made of materials ranging from porcelain to bone to white plastic. Its changes in form take place instantaneously. SCP-1384 was found inside a tunnel. 60 meters under a church in Durness, Scotland. The tunnel is approximately 16 kilometers long by 3 meters across and constructed of a single piece of marble, with 3 meter thick walls and ceiling. Notably, true marble is not naturally occurring in the British Isles. The method and date in which the tunnel was constructed are unknown, but artifacts found inside date at least to the 12th century. The floor is tiled with colored squares in white, yellow, black, blue, and orange. Each square is 50 cm across. Artifacts in the cave include carved stones, chalk, weapons, a chess board, and numerous chess pieces, checker pieces, and carved wooden soldiers. As of March 14, 2011, SCP-1384 is 1.2 km from the entrance of the tunnel, on an orange square. It is unable to move from this square unless certain circumstances are met. See Document 1384-1. SCP-1384 is able to alter reality, though apparently only in response to certain stimuli. It claims to be under certain rules that govern its abilities and behavior, but refuses to divulge those rules. It is otherwise cooperative and genial, though it seems to prefer some people to others. For reasons unknown, it prefers researchers to agents. All attempts to force SCP-1384 to move from the square it occupies or to injure it have had no effect. The squares can be damaged, but return to an undamaged condition as soon as SCP-1384 moves to a new square. Its ultimate goal is to reach the entrance of the hallway and leave. It is aware that the Foundation seeks to contain it, and is therefore unwilling to tell researchers the rules it operates under. SCP-1384 was discovered after the death of Father Bicar Durnus. His successor discovered a shaft leading to the entrance of the tunnel containing SCP-1384. He contacted his superiors in the church who ultimately contacted the Foundation through the Fisher Protocols. Incident Report 1384-2 Dr. Hauk had the following exchange with SCP-1384. What's your name? Ah, well, there's the trouble there. You couldn't say it. Couldn't even really hear it. Not to have it spoken rightly. Say, can you give me your name? Certainly, Dr. Hauk. Ah and thanks for that. Shortly after this exchange, everyone who entered the hallway became aware that the entity was named Dr. Hauk. The original researcher was no longer able to respond to that name, and people who knew him were temporarily unable to think of him by that name. The entity expressed a degree of regret, but would not relinquish the name, citing its rules. Several days later, the situation was resolved by the simple expedient of Dr. Ho saying to the researcher, I name you Dr. Halk. The effect on Dr. Halk was no longer evident, 
though the entity is still known by that name, by those who enter the hallway. Interview Log 1384-1 What are you? Ah, I couldn't tell you that, Jimmy. I don't think, on the one hand, I'd tell you too much, but it'd be more than you know. The less you know, the better my position. Why is it better? You're like an old man. I can see it right off. Want to keep me in this old hallway, just as he did. And didn't he do better than his predecessors? No. I gave him too much of a hint, and look where it got me. I'm actually two steps behind where he found me. Not a gambit I'd let you try. Why don't you just walk out? Well, that's the rules, you know. Well, that's the rules, you know. If I could just walk right out, I'd have done it a year and an age ago. But without rules, well, where would we be? Wouldn't know where any of us were, not really. It doesn't seem fair if we don't know the rules. Not my fault, either. Look, I have to scrape up every advantage I can. Who trapped you here? It was my own side, actually. Got me out of a tighter spot than this, if you can credit it. Sometimes you have to put the sacrifice, you know? Why are you telling me this? You're just a pawn, really. And I'm a big softy at heart. Besides, while I can get out eventually if you lot leave, I'm willing to bet you won't be as clever as the old man. You can try to keep me here, but I'll think you'll get me out even sooner. Call it our little game. Document 1384-1 Rules currently known or suspected to govern the behavior of SCP-1384 Rule 1 SCP-1384 is able to treat abstract concepts as having real existence. See Incident SCP-1384-2 Rule 2 SCP-1384 is able to take a step forward if it is left alone for 13 days. Initial containment procedures were focused on not approaching SCP-1384, on the theory that it would be unable to advance without interaction. Cameras watching showed it moved 13 days after last interaction. When questioned, SCP-1384 said, I told you I'd get out eventually without you. It'll take a while, of course, but you just can't leave me be. I'm on the home stretch now. The bones will roll, you know. Rule 3 SCP-1384 is able to affect the passage of time for individuals. Several statues were found half a kilometer further back in the tunnel. When examined more carefully, they appeared to be flesh and blood humans in clothing appropriate for the 19th century. When asked about them, SCP-1384 responded. They asked me for the time of day. Well, I gave them the time of day about 60 years from now. Ought to be a nice one. I think they'll like it. Rule 4 SCP-1384 cannot acknowledge anyone or anything that is predominantly yellow. When Dr. Ho entered wearing a yellow rain slicker, SCP-1384 refused to acknowledge his presence until he removed it. Further experiments with maize, yellow paper, and pencils had the SCP ignore these objects, except as they relate to other non-yellow objects. For example, he can acknowledge the pencil as a researcher writes with it but ignores it when presented with it directly. When asked why, it responded as follows. Well, it's a crosswise, you see, which means it is not at all friendly, not to me anyway. I suppose my buddy's got no problem there, but we can't help where we sit, right? Researchers painted the floor ahead of SCP-1384 yellow. However, the paint vanished the next time SCP-1384 made a move. Rule 5. SCP-1384 is able to take a step forward if certain people cross its shadow while walking in a clockwise direction. Dr. Ho was performing a careful inspection of SCP-1384's form when he walked around it. SCP-1384 stepped forward into a black square. It did not step forward when he crossed the other direction, but when he moved clockwise again, it stepped forward into a blue square. It wouldn't explain the significance. Note, Agent Faraday had previously stepped across SCP-1384's shadow without incident. 
and refused to explain the significance of Dr. Ho. Rule 6 SCP-1384 steps one square to the right when given a coin. Dr. Ho was looking through the contents of his pockets to find a piece of paper. SCP-1384 watched him fish several coins from his pocket and asked if he could have one. Dr. Ho decided, after some discussion with the surface team, that it was worth testing. He handed it a subway token. It immediately stepped to the right. Further coins given to it resulted in right steps until it reached a wall, at which point it stopped. Rule 7 SCP-1384 is able to create or summon some objects upon request. Researcher Dr. Hauk was interacting with SCP-1384 as part of normal containment protocol and asked if it would like to play a game to pass the time. SCP-1384 waved its hand and a table with a chessboard appeared in front of it. Researcher Dr. Hauk played several games with it. He asked if he could take it with him, to which SCP-1384 agreed. The chess set was made of a cardboard chessboard and wooden pieces. They were apparently hand-carved. The chessboard had no manufacturer's markings. Researcher Dr. Hauk reported that SCP-1384 has an adequate understanding of the rules but is not a truly proficient player, showing an unwillingness to sacrifice his pawns. Rule 8 SCP-1384 is forced to take a step back when certain people enter the hallway. When Agent Lochner reported to duty, SCP-1384 stepped back from its previous position, back onto a black square. However, when she tried to re-enter, SCP-1384 said, Already used your turn, love. Agent Lochner was able to enter two more times over the next two days, each time driving SCP-1384 back. However, it ceased working shortly after. Further attempts had no effect on SCP-1384. Rule 9 SCP-1384 is unable to step into a yellow square. Researcher Dr. Hauk inadvertently stepped clockwise across SCP-1384's shadow. SCP-1384 started to step forward, but stopped halfway, and returned to its original position. Blast! Should have been watching. Could have been a bad one, that. Well, I'll get to the side eventually. Rule 10 SCP-1384 is unable to change form at will. The trigger for these changes is currently unknown. Researcher Dr. Hauk asked SCP-1384 if it could change again after it assumed the form of a skeleton. It replied, Sorry lad, it's this or nothing for a bit. It's a rum card for sure, but we'll pass again in a bit, and with a little luck, you'll like me a bit better, eh? Rule 11 SCP-1384 is able to send people elsewhere, or possibly to destroy them. A D-Class personnel was brought in for testing SCP-1384's indestructibility. It was given a knife and told to attempt to cut SCP-1384's arm, which it attempted several times to no effect. The following exchange took place. Not that I mind so much, but what was trying to carve me up? They told me to cut you, Dr. Hauk. I get to go if I do what they tell me. Well, I do understand that. I'd get out myself if I could. Of course, I'll walk out eventually. Wish I could just up and get out of here. Do you? Well. As you like. D-5350 vanished. When Dr. Ho asked if the D-Class personnel was dead, or it could be brought back, SCP-1384 responded. I didn't kill him. He just went back to the start. I might be able to bring him back if you ask, but you probably wouldn't like it. Neither would he. He'll be back on his own eventually. If I bring him back, I can tell you right now I won't get it right. That's for free. I get no advantage from that deal. Shortly afterwards, the pattern of the tiles changed, and now contained red tiles as well as the original colors. Rule 12 SCP-1384 is unable to touch any person. This was previously assumed to be a rule, as SCP-1384 studiously avoided any direct contact with any person. However, when Agent Barnes held out his hand, SCP-1384 accepted it and shook. When asked, it said, Oh, I was just being polite, you know. 
I don't just up and prod people. I do have manners. I'm not a pick, you know. Actions SCP-1384 is able or compelled to perform, but for which the trigger is unknown. Step to the left. Step forward when no one crosses its shadow. Step backward when Agent Lochner is not present. Give gifts of chestnuts and bronze knives. Remove its own head. Change form. Know things that it could not learn from conversations that have taken place inside the tunnel. Current events, cultural references, hobbies, and interests of researchers and agents assigned to it. When Dr. Ho was about to tell it that it had been given a reference number, it correctly guessed that the number would end in a 4.